Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so I have this question. Uh, which is better, one, two, or three bedrooms? Uh, and this depends. Okay, so if it depends on whether you're looking for investment or for own stay. Uh, if you, because the question is quite vague. When somebody asks which is better, one, two, or three bedrooms, right? Then, um, you don't tell me whether you're looking to stay. Obviously, if you're looking to stay, then. Uh, you would want something a bit larger so definitely a two or three bedroom would be better than a one bedroom but if let's say you're looking for investment and you're looking to rent out it also depends on the different location and the different types of tenants for example if you're looking for a property in maybe asok area then in asok area right or nana area maybe uh, it's a little bit more questionable so the, the streets are a little bit more questionable and uh, most of the time uh, it's, it's a single male who's coming in to rent and that individual right wouldn't bring his or her family from overseas into Thailand to rent a property uh, if the person is a UK national uh, he or she most probably will not be bringing his whole family over from the UK to Thailand one of the considerations is education standards and in places like the UK, educational standards are higher in the UK as compared to places uh, as, as compared to Bangkok. Therefore, if you were a UK national, it is highly improbable that you would uproot your children from the UK and then shift your whole family to Bangkok and put your children in the international school system in Bangkok. Firstly, international school schools are really expensive in Bangkok and government schools government school standards are not that high so even though you can opt for the cheaper government schools but you most probably won't so in many cases when you invest a one bedroom might suffice because you are renting to maybe one single male or single female at the same time right if you take a look at uh, properties in Thailand especially the new condominiums uh, there are many uh, facilities whereby there are I mean, there are many condominiums with facilities like co-living spaces, co-working spaces, co-kitchens. So this actually allows for residents to uh, entertain their guests outside of their condominium. So the condominium being like maybe 30 square meters, it's just a place for them to come back after a long day's work, right? And then just rest. And then if they want to entertain or they want to work they might actually go out of their condominium and into the common areas uh, sometimes there's even like uh, free wi-fi in the common areas and then they do their work there they meet their clients there they meet their friends there they host their guests in the common areas so then it begs to it begs the question of why do you need such a large uh, such a large uh, condominium unit because essentially you are just going back to your condominium unit uh, to sleep sometimes not even to eat okay sometimes if you if you order grab food or you get you order like a uh, grab delivery right then the delivery person drops the food uh, at the condominium and then you most probably don't even bring it up to your to your home you eat it in the common area and then you you dispose of it and then you just go back to shower and sleep so it begs to question why you need such a large unit. Uh, so if you're looking for investment or own stay, then uh, you need to question what are your needs and wants. So if you if you need a larger place, your family is with you, uh, maybe you might want to study or you might want a place to, um, to work at home rather than you're not comfortable with working in the common areas, then, uh, then yeah, maybe you may, might need a two bedroom. Uh, that being said, right, many new condominiums, they don't even build three bedrooms anymore. Okay, so three bedrooms are pretty rare. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, different location has different types of tenants. So if you're looking at like Asok or Nana, then uh, because some of the streets are a little less, uh, a little more shady, then uh, most probably there will be just a single male who's renting the property there. Uh, if you are going to maybe places like Tong or Ekamai whereby there are international schools then there might be expatriates that uh, would be sending their children uh, to these international schools and therefore might demand a two or three bedroom because their families are with them. Uh, so if let's say usually 
if you want to rent out properties, I think maybe in more residential, upmarket residential areas with international schools, then you consider a two or three bedroom. But if you're looking for investment, most of the time it's a one bedder. Uh, at the same time, being a two or three bedroom would mean that the monthly outlay for rent is a lot higher. Uh, so now that rents in Thailand are actually slowly inching up, I, I guess you guys all can see that uh, things in Bangkok are actually getting a little bit more expensive. Uh, then, you know, people might not be willing to pay for a two or three bedroom, so they might just all uh, cozy up in a one bedroom. So maybe two people, like a couple, they might find that a one bedroom is sufficient. Yeah, so uh, I hope I answered the question. The question was quite vague, uh, but yeah, so if you're if you decide on investment, I would usually ask my client to uh, look for a one bidder uh, and then uh, essentially there's also a lower quantum investment so there's less risk uh, and rather than a two or three bedroom because then you need to uh, especially a three bedroom because then you need to look for uh, for tenants that have such a capability to pay for the three bedroom rent. Okay, so uh, that's all from me and I'll see you guys at the next video. Bye.